Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make a stopwatch type program for App Lab that can be used in a game or other app. We're going to start by going to the design mode and we're going to set up the interface. So we're going to grab two buttons. The first button, we're going to give it an ID of button underscore start. The text will be start. We're going to increase the font a little bit. We'll increase the font up to 22. If you want to resize the button, you can make it larger or smaller. And we're going to give it a background color of green. Next, we're going to go to the other button. We're going to call this button underscore stop. We're going to make the text say stop. We will also increase the font size up to 22 and we will give this a red background. Okay, so we've got our start and stop button. Next we're going to have to have a label that'll be our readout for the time. So I'm going to grab a label. I'm going to go up to label. I'm going to call it label underscore time. The text is going to start out at time colon and then zero because it'll start out at zero. Then we're going to increase the font size up to 30. So we can just move this around a little more centered. Now we've got our interface and we're going to start writing some code. So we're going to go to the code tab. Right now I'm in the text mode. I'm going to create a global variable called var start time. Now since this was declared outside of any function, this is a global variable that will last the lifetime of the program. This is important because we got to make sure start time doesn't get destroyed or reset. Next, I'm going to make another global variable, var is running. I'm going to set equal to false because when we start the program, it is not going to be running. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an event listener for when the start button is pressed. We could type it out here or drag it. However, the easiest way is to go to design click on the start button, go to events, and then click insert and show code. The only thing we want to get rid of is this default line of code where it'll output to the console button start clicked. Now we want to create an if statement. I'm just going to go over to control. I'm going to drag and drop this one and drag it up there. It'll convert it to text for me. And I want to say not is running. So if is running is false, this if statement will be true because we have the not that reverses the false value to true. Now if that's the case, we want to set is running to true because we're going to start the timer running. We also want to record the start time, so we're going to say start time. So we're overwriting the value here. We're not redeclaring it because there's no var. We're overwriting the value in start time and we're going to set it equal to get time. What this returns is the number of milliseconds since January 1st, 1970. If you're curious about why it starts at that date, Google Unix time. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a timed loop that's going to update this time here. So we're still in control. We're going to go down to timed loop and drag that there. We've got it set to 1,000 milliseconds or one second. You need to update at least one second. If it's more than that, that's fine. If you already have a timed loop you're using for something else, feel free to use it for this function too. So inside the timed loop, we want to get the current time. So we're making a local variable. This variable is going to get created every time we run the timed loop and destroyed every time the timed loop is finished. But that's okay, we only need this variable temporarily. So now we're going to get the time again, which is going to be the time right when it's called. Next, we're going to calculate the elapsed time, so the difference between current time and start time. So we'll make another local variable. We'll call it elapsed time, and we'll set it equal to current time minus start time. So this is going to give us how many milliseconds, or how many thousandths of a second, between the current time and the start time. Now, we really don't want it in milliseconds. We want it in seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to seconds, and we'll do that by saying elapsed time equals elapsed 
time divided by a thousand. Now we only want it down to the seconds in this case, so we're going to round it. So we round it by using a function, math.round, and then we'll have parentheses. So we divide the elapsed time by a thousand to tell us how many seconds were elapsed, and then we round it to the nearest integer. Put a semicolon there. Now the last thing that we're going to do in this function is we're going to update the value of the time there. So we're going to make a new line. We're going to use the set text command. And the ID that we want to access is the ID of this label. So we're going to say label underscore time. And then what we want it to say is time colon then a space. Now this is a string. We want to concatenate this. And we want to concatenate it with the data inside the variable elapsed time. So it'll say time and then whatever the elapsed time is. Again, we have our semicolon there. Let's close this toolbox, give ourselves a little more room to see the code. Now we're going to click on run. We'll click on start. And we'll see it is counting up. So right now the stop button doesn't work, so we got to add another event to stop our timed loop. So we will hit reset. Let's go over to design. We're going to go to stop. We're going to go to events and then insert and show codes. So we're going to create an event listener to listen for a click on the stop button. We'll get rid of this line of code here. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to set is running to false. So that way, if we want to start it again later, we can. And then we're going to call a function called stop timed loop. And that'll stop all the timed loops that are running. So we're going to try this again. We'll hit run. We're going to hit start. We're going to hit stop. And then we can start it again. And it'll start counting again. Now we're going to notice we're going to run into a little trouble when we hit 10. And I'm going to explain why this is going to happen. So it's getting cut off, and that's because our label isn't big enough. There's not enough room. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix this. We're going to go to design. We're going to drag out the size of the label just a little more, and then we've got plenty of room for as many digits as we need. So we'll hit run again. We'll start it and let it start counting up. There's a whole lot of uses you could use this for in your own app, whether you want to keep track of how long it takes a user to complete a level or to clear all enemies, or whether you want to time a user doing something, you can really apply this and this code to any of your own programs. So I'm going to go back to the code so you can see it. I'm going to show it in the block mode in case you'd prefer to use block mode. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so you can see all of the blocks. If you'd like to see some of the other lessons I have, they will be on the right hand side of the screen here. Tell me in the comments, what are you going to use the timer for in your own games and your own apps?